After completing all the exercises in the previous sections, our token issuance court app is finally ready. Let's give it a run. First, before we can run our court app, we need to deploy our court app. And what we're going to do is use a, a task called deploy nodes that will automatically create a local test network of nodes that we can run the court app on. So if we open up the build.gradle file here, we've got this deploy nodes Java task. And this is a task that will basically build a local network of nodes in this build forward slash nodes folder. You define each of the nodes using this syntax here, so a new node, and then you provide their name. If they're a notary, you, the, you specify the type of the notary. You give them a P2P port for messaging between nodes. Um, and then for the nodes that um, are non-notary nodes, we're also going to give some RPC ports. So RPC is how the node owner would speak to their node. Um, we'd list the core apps here. We'd provide some RPC users who can log in and perform actions, i.e. run flows on the node. So we've got a party A here in London on uh, messaging on port 10003 and available to connect to via RPC on port 10004. We've got a party B, etc., etc. party C. And so we're going to run this task. It's going to create a bunch of nodes configured to run together on our local machine. So let's go open up the command line here. So I'm just going to move to where the bootcamp core app folder is. And here I'm just going to do run gradlw clean deploy nodes java. So gradle is our build system when you're using this build system to run our deploy nodes task. So it takes a little while, but we can go and look at the outputs once they're done. So here we're creating uh, four directories, one for each node. So a notary node, party A node, party C node, and party B node. And we can go and inspect what that looks like. So you can see each of the folders here. And a quarter node is actually relatively simple. It's just the quarter software, a quarter jar, that we run using you know, java-jar, uh, quarter.jar. So that's the actual quarter software. There's a quarter apps folder that will hold all the quarter apps we have installed on our node. Those are still being generated. Oh, there you go. So there we can see our bootcamp quarter apps being installed on our node. And a quarter app is just a set of classes, and all the classes in the quarter app will be loaded onto the class path of the node at runtime. It's really no more complicated than that. Then we're running in dev mode here, so we have some dev certificates. Um, we have our logs, and we have a node configuration file. So here's all the information about the node. We also have this persistence.mv file, so this is the database file used by the node, um, and it will store all the transactions, the states, etc. So now we can run our nodes using this script run nodes here. So I'll just do build forward slash nodes forward slash run nodes. And we're just starting up the nodes here. So here we can see this is the notary here starting up. Then we've got party A starting up, party C starting up, and party B starting up. And so again, we're starting up a full node. We're initializing a lot of things, so it takes a little while. But once they're live, we'll have access to something called the node shell. We can actually start to interact with our node. And there we go. So now our node is live. And now our nodes are stood up. We can interact with them. So one thing we can do is look at all the flows available on our node. So here we can see our token issue flow, as well as the example flow we uh, provided for you. And if we do flow start token issue flow, there you can see it's, it's asking for an owner and an amount. And so running a flow is as simple here as going token issue flow and just providing an owner, perhaps party B, and an amount, let's say 99. And here we're just running this from the command line. In practice, you'd connect to the node via RPC and then you'd layer a kind of a, a UI on top of that, provide a server for interacting directly with your node. But this shell is a great way just to see your nodes are working. So let's kick off this flow. So that flow is done now. Um, and to actually see the output, we're going to run another command, which will be vault query. This is just to look at the contents of our vault, look at the states we have stored. And here I should have to pass in a contract state type. I'm just going to pass in 
the state type we defined earlier, which was token state. And there you go. So it's not the prettiest interface, but here you can see our transaction and the states. And so here we have a state and we've got the issuer, party A, the owner, party B, the amount, the participants. So remember that the participants are the people who would store this transaction, so party A and party B. It's governed by this contract, token contract. It's got this notary um, and so on and so on. So various pieces of information there. Now, this was issued to party B. So if I go to party B now, I can run the same thing. So I can run vault query, um, contract state type, java boot camp dot token state. And here I can see the exact same information. So an issue of party A, an owner party B, an amount 99, etc. So this is that blockchain guarantee that both participants see the same data. But importantly, uh, Corda is a privacy first platform. And so this was just an agreement between party A and party B. And had nothing to do with party C. And now if I go to party C and I run the same thing, well, what we'll see is that they weren't involved in the transaction. And so they don't actually get to see these tokens. And there you go. So even though party A, B and C are all on the same network, only party A and B have been involved in that transaction, so only they've seen the states involved in that transaction. Party C on the same network hasn't seen anything.